I don't think so. Hello. Ah, yeah. Cool. Hi. Hi. Y'all were so friendly to me last time that I told y'all a really dark story. I decided to try to tell a happier story this time. The challenge that you gave me was to tell a story about Russ's space house. And then someone said, pumpkin spice latte, which... <laughs> So, with that being the case, a strange tale of the open stage. Got to unstick it here because we must keep it closed until it's ready to be revealed, which I think is now. <clears throat> Russ's space house. The sun was not seen. The earth stood in the way. There was no light at all in the space house that day. Alicia just stood there with Brett by her side, and they could not wake Russ up with aught that they tried. They tried singing songs and reading a book, but Russ never responded, not even a look. So all they could do was stare, 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 as Russ kept on sleeping like they weren't even there. Then behind them, the airlock did crash as it shut. Something had entered, they did not know what. The lock hissed and reopened, and in who did saunter? Why, the one they most dreaded. It was Scott, the moon monster. <laughs> He smiled his huge smile, and it crinkled his nose, and he laughed at them staring at Russ in repose. He knew that with Russ sleeping, he would have free reign. A chance in a million might not come again. He said, I know some stretches that we all could do. You will be quite limber whenever we're through. I'll do demonstrations and show you each pose. I'll teach you to touch your cockix to your nose. But Alicia and Brett gave the offer a pass. They had no desire to touch their nostril to ass. <laughs> Moon Monster, still smiling, then chuckled with mirth. He loved making mischief way over the earth. But before he continued, the two hatched a plan. They turned off the cryosleep on Marie and Chris Strand. Now, now, said Moon Monster, we need no others about. I just want to have fun while dear Russ has passed out. You know you can't wake him, his nap is not through. I wanted this playtime with just you and you. As Chris and Marie slowly came out of sleep, the alarms in their tubes began loudly to beep. The sound was so shrill and the noise filled the base, but Russ just slept on with a smile on his face. And Brett and Alicia showed much trepidation. They had no use at all for Scott's rude demonstrations. Their other two cohorts were still a bit foggy. They would not feel safe till their crew was less groggy. Moon Monster decided to quickly take charge. He launched a diversion and made it quite large. He shut off the gravity, foiling their plans, since he could walk well on his feet or his hands. <laughs> Marie and Chris Strand had come full to their senses. Seeing Moon Monster there in the space house defenseless, they nodded to Brett and Alicia in tandem, hoping the nod would make them understand them. With the gravity gone and all floating about, the moon monster swam round with a laugh and a shout, collecting the doodads and whatnots and stuff like a crazed Katamari who could not get enough. He grabbed up the wrenches and jumpsuits and glue, the small petri dishes and large petris too. He balanced the star charts rolled up on his head and all the devices from under Strand's bed. He turned them all on and then bounced off the wall like a moon monster vibrating big bumble ball. <laughs> Strand was nonplussed, but Marie was unshaken, since none of her things were among those that were taken. She got out her stilts and they gave her good height. She was sure they would end all the mischief that night. So she stretched out her arms to give Scott little room, and Alicia and Brett herded him with long brooms. Strand made his way to the gravity panel to turn it back on once he'd found the right channel. 
Just as it seemed that Moon Monster was trapped, Strand found the button marked on, which he slapped. Never quite thinking about those up above who were promptly embraced by some gravity love. <laughs> Moon Monster guffawed as the gravity took and he dropped all the stuff like a red-handed crook. The stuff flew all over. Oh my, what a mess. What would happen next was anyone's guess. Marie was still braced with her hands and her stilts and was not tossed about when the others were spilt. She was getting so mad with her peak running deep. The space house was troubled and Russ was asleep. Moon Monster was moving as fast as he could with the floor paying ketchup and doing no good. He laughed as he capered and giggled with glee as they all tried to round up this non-invitee. Alicia was smart and with measured restraint grabbed a moon monster trap and some white bulkhead paint. She laid out the cage with an eye for its hiding and painted it up so it matched the base siding. Brett and Chris Strand, as distractions, quite flimsy, served the purpose of blinding moon monster with whimsy. They bumbled and crashed to the ground in a heap, but they managed moon monster's attention to keep. Marie took two steps and was right in his face. Moon monster then fled through the only clear space it seemed that the trap would succeed. Here's a shocker. It missed the moon monster and caught the stilt walker. <laughs> By now, the crew knew the space house was in danger. Moon monster amok and Russ away in a manger. The chances to save it seemed slim and erratic. Then the whole picture changed in a loud burst of static. The shuttle was docking as Frankie arrived, calling in to make sure all her peeps were alive. Her fear was quite silly, but easy to trace. She'd spent way too many nights up late playing dead space. She completed her errand so proud to relay, she'd returned to the space house with God on a tray. Six small cups of heaven so frothy and nice, latte from space Starbucks with pumpkin and spice. <laughs> Nothing could wake Russ like this coffee so sweet. Like a pie in a cup, should you drink or should you eat? It really was lovely and no great expense since Starbucks sold six cups for just 99 cents. The moon monster panicked and shot for the port. He had to win free before Russ got a snort of the pumpkin and cinnamon and nutmeggy fragrance and woke to evict him, their lunatic vagrant. The race was so close as moon monster fled as Frankie brought the coffee to Russ's space bed. Would the moon monster make it? It seemed so hard to tell. Then the contest was over as Russ got his first smell. He sat bolt upright with his eyes bright and alert and he gulped down a shot of that coffee dessert. He reached for his space hat and with practiced ease tossed it to tangle the moon monster's knees and he lost it. He laughed as the moon monster fell on his face, robbed for the moment of his signature grace. Russ opened the airlock and nudged him right in, then ejected him out to Moon Monster's chagrin. All of the crew shouted, hip, hip, hooray. They were tired from chasing Moon Monster all day. They gathered around and all made quite a fuss, happy to have a more vertical Russ. The space house was saved and the crew drank their drinks, all safe in the space house, free from hijinks, for now. <laughs> Let's